Hi, I'm Rani Zeller and I'm going to teach you a little bit about how to use my books in a flow of a kinesiology treatment. What we've done today is decided that we're going to work with allergies because it's a very common symptom. So we've worked out with Shelley that she's got a reaction and she's feeling bloated and she's feeling tired and lethargic and, and by the end of the day her muscles are all weak. Is that, that pretty correct? Yes, pretty yeah. correct. Yeah. Okay, and then so what we've done is we've found out all the problems that are associated with that and we've taken probably five or ten minutes just sitting down and discussing that and then we've found out um, through discussion that Shelley wants to be able to wake up feeling energized and also wake up um, feeling like she's she can handle the rest of the day with with motivation and enthusiasm and then the third step is how will you know when you get there and that's simply I'll be able to do what I what I want to do with excess energy okay the first thing we're going to do is go to the allergy book just to see if there's an allergy because it's it's sounding pretty obvious that there's going to be some sort of allergy so I'm going to do and then we're going to go into the book one formula so I'm going to start off with the formula and we've got the client to think about the three steps in our goal the second step is the pretest. So I'm just going to run through that very quickly. So I'm going to first of all make sure that we do have an unlocked muscle and we do have a locked muscle. I'm also going to show you that with the anterior deltoid as well. So just hold. So I'm getting her to apply a small amount of pressure in resistance to mine. So if she's gone a bit floppy, I just I'll just be going just hold a little bit firmer, but I don't want it to be a, a, a willpower muscle test. I'm going to squeeze together the spindle cells of the anterior deltoid and that will make the arm go down because we're unlocking the muscle temporarily. Then we can lengthen to strengthen for it to go back up and then I will say hold and that should hold. I'm going to come back down to the brachioradialis. We're going to go through all the pretests, and there's about five or six of them. In those pretests are included, does Shelley need to drink any water? Is her hydration okay? I can at the same time check mine and when I'm checking that I'm asking indicator muscle if Shelley needs to drink water. So hydration and my hydration, there's been no indicator change so I know that that's going to be pretty good. So now we're going to be doing switching. Shelley can you just place your hand on your navel? So this accesses most of the organs in the body. I'm going to ask the indicator muscle, indicator muscle change if Shelley needs to rub neurological switching of up and down which is the governing and central meridians and that looks pretty clear. Then I'm going to go to the kidney 27 points and I'm just going to gently put pressure on there while asking the indicator muscle does Shelley need to rub these and there's no change which means no. Then we're going to go to the tailbone area and ask the same questions. And I'm not going to dig under there, I'm just simply going to aim that in that direction. Now if one of them was out, I would simply go, Shelley, could you just hold your navel and rub kidney 27s please? And so what we're waiting for is either for them to have a nice big sigh or I can also come back to them and go, are they okay? So if I, it depends on the question, is that okay or do we need to rub it again? It's going to give us a different question. So be careful what you're asking for. So. With my students, I always go, indicate a change if Shelley needs to rub this more. And then it sends a very clear message to the person and it's very clear in my head. So there's, in the formula book, there's also a few other uh, pretests that I've put in there as well, which I always use and find them um, good. Okay. Now I'm going to go back into this allergy book because I'm sure that because she's feeling so tired, my assumption is already that it's going to be sugar, but I just want to actually check that very quickly. And I'm just going to ask, is it a raw food product? Is it a fruit? Is it a vegetable? Is it something in the deli? Is it sugar? And the arm's going to go down. So in this book, it's come up sugar. I'm just going to go and find some sugar and I'll be back. Might be a moment. We've got some sugar here. Now, the best way to do this is I can hold it over Shelly's cheeks and that will tell me whether she's reacting to it. But we can also scan it over the entire body to see where she's reacting. So I'm, I'm again asking for an indicator muscle change if Shelley's reacting to the jaw. Oh, there we go, and she is. So I would put that into circuit and continue on. I'm just going to quickly scan other places. Oh, here we go, there's another one. Feet together and apart to, um, to stack it in. And so Generally, we can just say 
Shelly, you're reacting in this area, or if you know more anatomy, you could be say, maybe saying, is it in the diaphragm, or is it in the lungs, or is it in the small intestine? It's the small intestine. So again, I would stack that. It could also be the gallbladder, or the liver, or, or cells, or the skin. So the more anatomy you know, which is in my book seven, the better the completeness of it. I can keep scanning down there, but at the moment that's enough. If I got another few, few sugars, I would just simply stack them in like that. So now that we have all of that information, go back to your book one, and I'm going to find out all the information in relation to that. So Shelley, I'm just going to check for you. In relation to your reaction to sugar, so kinesiologists aren't really allowed to say allergies, we're allowed to say reactions or sensitivities or intolerances. So I change that language as we go. So Shelley, your reaction to the sugar, I'm going to ask, is it physical? And if it did say physical, then I would go to my physical book, or I could simply go back to the index and go, is it in a body system? Is it in a gland? Is it in an organ? And depending on what that is, is where we would go. So no, it's not physical. Is it mental? If it was mental, I would go to the mental section and then work through those questions. If it was emotional, I would go to the emotions page and work through that. If it's spiritual, which is more likely to be if you are religious and you're not allowed to have cow's milk, cow meat or, or something like that. Generally, sugar and spirituality may not come up. Then if it's nutritional, which is this part, I would probably go and find out what body system it relates to and whether the amino acids are working and whether you're able to absorb the carbohydrates or is there an elimination or a digestion. All of those sort of things are in this nutrition part of this book. Okie dokie, so we've got that. Let's go back to this. Now that we've got all the relevant information, and that can be in all five categories, so that could be also physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and nutritional. To get the most depth out of it, I would then go and age recess to find out when this reaction of the sugar actually first started, and then work through and talk and discuss all that information. So it might be in relation to something, or she had a big birthday party and ate too much sugar and threw up, and now she's still got the memory. It can be anything like that. So we can age recess. If my books don't have enough information, or you're a kinesiologist and you've got more information, go and find that as well. So that's all in section three, which is finding all the information. The correction procedure is in step four and what we're doing is finding out is it safe to remove the toxicity and is it safe to correct and whereabouts are we going to correct and all of those things. So there's about eight different steps in there and what you're doing with each step is you're looking for an indicator muscle change to make sure that, that it's, it's safe enough to go on. So it, for instance I've got here, does this healing need to have colour, sound or any other sense? And if it said yes then I would go is that a smell? Is that a hearing? Is that a sight? Is that a taste? And that's a taste. So in my book five, I've also got all the information about the tongue and the different, like the salty or the bitter or the astringent. So if you want to be really specific and really in detail, there's all that information there as well. And then the last thing, is it safe to finish this treatment on every level? You must get an indicator change. Now, if you don't get an indicator muscle change for that, I would simply just put that into a circuit to circuit locate that and then I would check why is it not safe to correct or safe to finish this circuit and then I would go again is it physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, nutritional. It doesn't matter whichever one it is, you simply go back to the index on the formula, find it on the index and then talk about it, look at it, do another little mini correction in it. So I kind of see a lot of this as you're going down a freeway and then if there's a complication, it's a roundabout before you keep going. And then there might be a physical roundabout and you keep going. At the end of step four, the correction procedure. Now, as a kinesiologist, you've probably got other tools that you can incorporate here. What I've done for mainstream and for every single person to be able to use this correction is we flip the page to page 18, 19, and I simply ask, in order to correct this sensitivity around allergies, do, you, do we correct it um, via a physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, nutritional? So we're, I'm keeping this simple. So nutrition, it could be um, eat slower, sit at the table, eat in a relaxed atmosphere, 
eliminate some foods which would obviously be the sugar. Uh, we can look at the digestion time. We can do a whole lot of different things within nutrition. Let's just give another example. If we had mental in relation to um, the sugar and the sugar was a mental correction, that could be change your belief systems or connect your head to your heart or learn something new. So maybe she needs to go home and do some research on nutrition or on the benefits of not having sugar. Then we go across onto the step five, which is the treatment completion checkups. And then what we're doing here, after we've done the correction and we've closed the circuit, we're going through and, and checking that Shelley's gonna keep everything. So there's about five or six different dot point forms there. And in general, it's, it's Shelly, in relation to this sugar that we've just corrected, indicate a change if you're not going to be able to keep the gains or welcome or healing, and indicate a change if you're going to sabotage anything. Now that looks pretty safe. If there was a, a change, then I would go back and do physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and nutritional. Usually on this, this end of it, it's a quick glitch and a quick pick up. Okay, now I can also ask, is there anything nutritional that we need to, to support this? I'm not, a natural, I'm not a nutritionist, so I can't recommend nutrients, but I can say on an energy level, your body is maybe needing more vitamin Bs. So I, I think that giving that sort of general information is okay because Shelley can now go to the health food shop, she can now pick it up, talk to a, a nutritionist on her own, but she's got an angle to go in. Then the very last thing that I would be asking is, is there any processing time? So that can be minutes, hours, days, weeks, or months. So if it muscle tested down as weeks, and if it come up to say maybe three weeks, then I would be suggesting to Shelley that she's going to have ups and downs during those three weeks where her small intestine will be detoxifying or she may have a few, if it was in the liver at the beginning, that she might have a few anger issues that come to the surface, but just to go with them and, and let them come up and go down. That pretty much completes the, the how-to formula and this formula is good for every single book because it's very generic and it's very thorough and the corrections can still stay the same but that's not to say that you don't add your own correction points in there as well. I hope that helps you. Okay, thank you very much for watching all the tutorials. I've really enjoyed teaching you and I really hope that you got a lot out of this. What I'd like to do now is to support you continuously with doing some um, FaceTime or Zoom um, demonstrations with you. And my goal is to bring up, show you new topics. So maybe it's like working with the autoimmune, maybe it's working with stroke, maybe it's working with chronic fatigue, depression, anything. What I'd like is to get a network of people together and we all come together once a month and we start to talk about real situations and, and what I'm going to do is show you through my books and, and give you direct page numbers and pages and, and book numbers and everything to work through so that you're starting to get to learn to play in it and, and enjoy it. Finally, I know that you're all asking where can you buy the books? Where you can buy the books is through Amazon and you can buy them as an EPUB and you can also buy them as a paperback. So if you'd also like to do one of my online courses, please go through baysidekinesiology.com and there you can download the courses. Take as long as you want or as quick as you want to be able to do them. As soon as the final submission has been put in, a certificate will come up and that course is accredited through IICT, which is International Institute of Complementary Therapies. If you'd like to find out more information really quickly, click the link below and that'll get you my free access to my kinesiology page, as well as you can like me on Facebook and Instagram.